Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about how we can more often be in a ventral vagal state of safety and connection and ultimately reduce our pain and symptoms. So let's get into it. Remember that pain is a danger signal. And the more often we're in a sympathetic state of fight or flight or a dorsal vagal state where we're shut down, we're immobilized with fear, the more often mind-body symptoms like pain, fatigue, dizziness, tinnitus are gonna be sent. And so what we ultimately need to do is learn to shift to a ventral vagal state where we're feeling safe, we're feeling connected with people, we're socially engaged, we feel calm, relaxed, maybe even a bit playful. And you're not always going to be there, but we need to learn to shift. Even throughout my day, I go through all three states. It's just, you know, in my healing, on my healing journey, I've learned to shift from being in a fight or flight sympathetic state or a shut down dorsal vagal state to more often being in a ventral vagal state. And that's what this video is about. Now, I did a video a couple of weeks ago, kind of on an overview of polyvagal theory. And so if you haven't watched that, I'll link it to the top because the video I'm doing today is kind of a follow-up to that one. And in this video, we're really gonna focus on how we can deepen a ventral vagal state. Now, Deb Dana has a technique she calls anchoring. And what we need to learn to do is anchor more often in a ventral vagal state. And so we need to identify, you know, really predictable ways we can shift to that state. And this is the who, what, when, and where. And once we identify the who, what, when, and where of our ventral vagal system, then we can go there more frequently. We can intentionally start to use these to anchor ourselves more in this safe and connected state. And then we can start to use them really frequently. And I do this a lot. I do this really often in my life. So let's go through the who, what, when, and where, and how we can anchor in that ventral vagal state and what this can kind of look like. But I want to be clear with people, it looks different person to person. And this can take some exploring to figure out what's putting you in this safe and connected state. Because no matter where you're at, it may only be for a couple minutes a day, we're probably shifting to that state even just periodically. And we need to really take note of how we're getting there. So let's start with the who. You know, in my life, there's certain people that put me in a ventral vagal state. I think about my son, he's super playful. He always wants to have fun. He's always super curious. We're doing dance parties like every day. And of course, raising children, it'll put you in a sympathetic state some of the time. But a lot of times when he's in this state, he pulls me into this safe and connected place, this ventral vagal place. And so he's a who of how I can anchor in a ventral vagal state. Now, there's also certain friends that I have that I'll call, like if I'm having a problem at work or if I'm feeling kind of on high alert, I know I can call these friends and they shift me to a ventral vagal state. Now, other who's in our life that can do this can also be things like animals. Animals are great resources for us. You know, I, I know in all my videos, you've seen my three cats. Cuddling with my cats shifts me to this more safe and connected state. And so identifying the who, who's in your life, I, I sound like an owl right now, I'm saying who over and over again, but identifying who shifts you to a ventral vagal state, whether it's friends, loved ones, animals, or any, any person in your life that can shift you there. Because then you have a resource and you can maybe give them a call for five minutes or cuddle with one of your family members on the couch. There's a lot of cuddling going on in my house a lot of the time. And by doing this, we can start to deepen that ventral vagal state. 
Now let's talk about the what. We can also anchor in a ventral vagal state with certain things that we do. This could be hobbies. This could be going for a walk. Um, you know, I do a lot of Qigong or yoga. Sometimes it's even breathing. And I always say this, I feel like I say this every second video, but breathing in a ratio of one to two. So taking a deep breath into your stomach and make that exhale nice and slow and twice as long as your inhale. Now, another good what to anchor in a ventral vagal state is sighing. Sighing really can do this. And I do this all the time. And so what you do is you breathe in and then you sigh. So it looks like this. I felt a little bit calmer as I did it right there. And so these are resources. Some of them are longer things that we can do. Like I know for myself, you know, if I go do yoga, usually I'm doing it for like at least 15, 20 minutes. So that's not always accessible to me, but taking a few deep breaths or sighing can really get me there. But we also think about hobbies that we can do that put you in this safe and connected state more often. So identify the what's in your life. What shifts you to that state? You know, we don't want to engage in our world too much. What's putting us into a sympathetic or a dorsal vagal state. So we need to identify the opposite. Like what's shifting us to a safe and connected state. Now, what ones have I covered? Who, what, and now the when. So when we talk about the whens that can anchor us in a ventral vagal state, you know, this could be certain times of day for a lot of people at certain times of year, but it can also be past memories. You know, I have a handful of past memories that I will visualize or think about for 30 seconds because it just shifts me to a sense of safety and calmness. It causes a shift to take place in my nervous system, even if I do it for 30 seconds or a minute. A lot of times I almost do this visualization. If I'm feeling really stressed or I'm feeling, you know, shut down, I'll do a bit of a visualization about a happy memory from the past that can shift me there. But I also want to talk about times of day for the when, because everyone has times of day where they're more likely in this safe and connected state. For myself, it's morning. I don't know if you can tell by my energy right now, but right now I think it's about 7.30 in the morning. And this is a great time of day for me. I feel the most relaxed. I feel the most at ease. And it really just helps me connect with myself and feel safe. And so whenever the morning time comes, I know to intentionally lean into that, leaning into those feelings and really deep in that ventral vagal state by savoring it. Sometimes it's just simply drinking my coffee on the back deck of my house and just relaxing there for 15 minutes and really savoring that moment. And so think about the winds, you know, whether it's past memories, whether it's times of year, I know we're moving into summer. I always feel a little bit nicer, a little bit better in the summer, more sunshine, but also think about times of day. And so identify this for yourself. And now we've covered the who, what, and when. I feel like I'm doing this every time because I'm forgetting where I'm at. And now it's the where, you know, there's different places that can actually put us into a ventral vagal state. This could be things for a lot of people, it's nature. You know, for myself, there's like a wooded park area by my house with lots of trees. When I go there, I try to go there every morning and just go for like a short walk. When I'm there, I am really enjoying myself. I'm really feeling safe, feeling connected with the world. I feel calm, I'm feeling happy whenever I'm there. It's like my problems melt away, even if it's just for 10, 20 minutes as I go for a walk. But that's a place that I've identified that creates a sense of safety for me. So think about this, you know, where is it for you that creates safety for you? Like I said earlier, like being on my back deck and being in the sunshine will do this. I also have a favorite chair in my house. This is usually where I'm like watching TV, 
um, sometimes reading. But if I'm having a stressful day at work and I happen to be working from home that day, I'll just bring my laptop to that chair and sit there. And I feel a little bit more at ease. For some people, it's like a favorite coffee shop or their friend's house or their parents' house. I know whenever I walk into my parents' house, I have really good relationships with both of them. I really feel safe in that zone. And I know I'm privileged. I know not everyone has that, but that's a place that sh causes a shift in my nervous system right when I walk in the door. And so that's the who, what, when, and where of how you can anchor in a ventral vagal state. And the more often you do this, the more we create feelings of safety, the more our nervous system becomes regulated and that danger signal of pain or fatigue or other mind body symptoms will slowly start to decrease. So I really challenge people to identify these for yourself. And once you identify them, then it's making sure that you're throughout your day, you're sprinkling them in. Like I said, every day, you're going to be in all three different states. You're going to shift around. That's just how we're built as human beings. But by identifying what anchors you more in the ventral vagal safe and connected state, you can start to sprinkle them in. It's kind of like a tally throughout the day. And so I, I know Deb Dana has talked about that. Like at the end of the day, whether we think we've had a good or a bad day usually is like where we've been at in terms of the state of our nervous system. And so if we can start to sprinkle in and anchor into a ventral vagal state throughout our day, we're more likely at the end of the day to be like, oh, we've had a good day. And it's because you've created feeling, feelings of safety, of ease, of connection, of playfulness throughout your day. And so, you know, the other thing that I really challenge people to do, and I've talked about leaning into pleasant sensations. This is how Alan Gordon talks about it. Even when we're doing somatic tracking, we can lean into other pleasant sensations in our body. And so Deb Dana talks about it in terms of savoring. We're really talking about the same thing at this point, just different words. But you need to savor ventral vagal moments. Once you've anchored in a ventral vagal state, make sure you intentionally savor that. Even if it's just for 30 seconds or a minute, savor how your body feels in this state because we're trying to get to a place where our nervous system becomes more regulated. And so actually savoring once we're anchored in a ventral vagal state can be really impactful. I do this all the time. Sometimes it's just a few sighs that I'll do and really enjoy the sensations that are taking place in my body. So I hope this video was helpful. Please put your questions or comments down below, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and I will see you all next time. Happy healing.